Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Why why can't you look at me, Rex? You got you got you got to you got to say I'm Daniel I, and we I'm do the Daniel. cut. We cut back. I'm Rex. I indeed. You, this is you're not even facing me. <laughs> but I'm showing you, presenting you with my best side. This is this is <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of like like skyping with somebody while they're still in the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Except for I can't see your face at all. I have I have no idea what this shot looks like. Yeah. You got the good setup. You got like the I do. Lot. Yeah. I got look. I get to stand right in the middle for the first time ever. I just <laughs> take up all of this. You don't even have a t- countertop. No, I got the top of this chair. Yeah. Right here. We'll don't see. drop anything. All right. So what's <laughs> so today? What's our social distancing whiskey. Today is a gift from Chris Smallwood. So. You're gonna have to yell over there and I'll hold the bottle up over here. Chris Mullen, you magnificent bastard! <laughs> this is so weird! And and here's what here's what else we did. Yeah. We got loves. Oh yeah, we did get loves. That because, means I can walk well, it wasn't this all setup. the way over here. It was partially a setup. I guess by we, this This is mostly corner. mostly because you always wander off. How close is too close? That's too close. Because now that I've got lobs, <laughs> I can go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you can. No, you can. You just be, be careful what you're muttering to yourself as you wander around the room. Yeah, no kidding. All right, I'm going to get my glass now. So you need to get your glass. Okay. All right. Look, I washed yeah. my hands and I, I sanitized my hands. Get a pour in here first. Before we started. Okay. Set your glass back down over there. Don't even look at it. I don't want your eye coronas. How am I supposed? <laughs> eye corona. Go, 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 go. Oh, uh, oh, uh. All right. There's a guy you... Anyway. No oh, is this... Uh, we're in scotch? So, so, no. I know it smells like it, doesn't it? It smells very scotchy. This is New Holland, which... Uh, is, like which a is, Highland Space Side type of deal. Yeah. Remember, New Holland's like serious beer people. Okay. Right. But this is a brewer brewer's series they call Cask and Smoke, and it's peated malts. Um, so they mixed American Wait. malt with uh, it's probably Baird's heavily peated malt. Okay, that's that's where the scotch. Yeah, is. and yeah. then they put them into quarter casks and various other barrels, and then they mixed them all together. Yeah, you throw a peat in there, and then you're definitely roughly eighteen months old. Okay, all right. Now on the nose, I'm not getting anything that would lead me down the path of. The common issues we see with brewers making whiskey, at least you know when they, when they don't have a lot of experience, it, t- it smells like a really nice, sweet, malty. Um, I'm not getting a lot of smoky character. No, not in the nose. Right. But I am getting a like a really high, for lack of a better term, a high ethanol. Like it smells young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely young. But it doesn't smell faulty. Like it doesn't have the weird faults of like funk or Overly musty or any of the pine green. I or... predict we're going to get in on this thing and be like some really nice flavors. I can't wait to see what they turn into. Yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I would say. Yeah. Very candied vanilla sweet. Yep. You know what this reminds me of? The thing we were trying yesterday, and actually. At the smoke, it does finally start to show <clears throat> up. It's more of an, like an earthy character. Yeah. And there's not much of it. Uh, it's very, it's very subtle. Yeah, it does. Compared to it's the sweeter in the, things. It's in the like earthy finish. Yeah. Like the ending tastes sort of like mulchy earthy, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. still sweet. It's still got a lingering sweet thread through it. But I don't get yeah. smoke in this at all. So Those cuts must have been really narrow. In, in and of itself, this is already pretty nice. It's just going in a much more. It will be much more interesting. It will be much more developed with time. You can tell. This is young. It hasn't really gotten to the point that it probably should get to really get the full effect of this combination of the mash bill and the aging and the peat. And, well, and they're yeah. up in Michigan, so they don't get the benefit of, like in Texas, where we've got, mm. we get whiskey that's like dark as molasses in four and a half months. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to try this with. Mm? It reminds me a little bit of the very, very first ever release that Real Spirits did. Yeah. Which is another beer company. Yeah, here's the thing. Is it weird that I keep looking back at you? It's not helpful to keep looking back at you, but well, I, I, mean, I want to. I know you can't resist. Well, that's true. I mean. How about this action? Right there. I know what you came for. Yeah. What? <laughs> um, I want to try. So Real Spirits is yeah. another beer company turned distilling company. Real yeah. Ale. 
Now, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and before you finish that thought, real quick, I I may be projecting because I know this is from like predominantly started off beer guys, mm -hmm. but there's almost almost that earthiness almost turns into like an herby hoppiness, and I may be projecting that. Yeah, go back to the taste. Yeah, I can see what you mean by that. Okay, you're saying yeah, you're definitely spirits. projecting it, but. I see exactly yeah. the flavor profile that would lead you down that path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does have that, and it shows about halfway pop through of herb and right. Yeah, grass note. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the real spirits. Their signature. The first batch they ever released. Man, I should have this in my office, not up here in the vault. This is a commemorative bottle that I bought, or was either. Yeah, Jesus. So this is also malt. Do I need to if finish? I remember correctly. How many glass? What's the glass situation over there? Well, you got a bunch of clean glasses over there I haven't right. touched. Okay. All right. I can pour into yeah. one of them if you'll turn it over for me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> That's how you get it. That science. <laughs> okay. And you know what? So another whiskey we all have a hard time getting, but this is. Uh, they're growing, like so. Real spirits is oh, their yeah. production and their releases are we, getting. We were there. Better. We did a video over there I yeah. think, several months ago. Yeah, huge beer operation, microscopic whiskey operation, but they have access no, totally to this, this range of equipment and resources that other distilleries at that scale don't have access to. So they're doing some really yeah, interesting absolutely. Things. <clears throat> uh, this is way more coffee, coffee caramel. Yeah, definitely got the caramel. Uh, so it's not the try a sip of it and you'll get this like cream sweet uh, see, coffee. We're note. we're an American whiskey now for sure. Yeah. Like at first glance, it's probably the, the peak character from that first whiskey. I was more in Scotland than American whiskey. This is yeah. American whiskey. Oh, oh, do it. So try the real and then go back to the cask and smoke. And now what it tastes like is like a Johnny Walker budget, uh, uh, like not the red, but a lower Johnny Walker where the smoke is just in there for a little bit of ash accent. You mean like a black? Yeah, but younger. Okay. So imagine the grain shininess of Johnny Walker. Yeah. And the little ashy ending. Yeah, totally. Yeah, come back to it that way and think of it that way. It's actually closer to that. Yeah. I'm actually digging this reel right now. Yeah, me too. That coffee note's delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for my preferences, the real spirits one. It's like a like whole a, new ball game. Like almost a toasty honey on that. I can't. Reel. You, you realize that I'm standing on my side of this over here? Yeah. Because I'm so used to it, <laughs> I can't get myself to stand in the middle. Yeah, I've never stood here before, so yeah. I don't have So that. you're fine? Yeah, I'm good. I'm I good. gave you some comments over there. You want to read them? Did you? Oh, on the floor. Did you, did you desanitize them? I Lysoled them. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's perfume. Oh, that's uh, sweet. There's a lipstick mark on the top, too. <laughs> Irish whiskey, uh, Irish Channel whiskey. That was the episode. This yeah. is from James Brown. You've mentioned scotch being majority aged in bourbon barrels now, but what was it matured in 150 years ago, when I'm assuming there wasn't a real availability of bourbon cask in the UK? Uh, but many of the Scots and Irish distilleries were already well established. Would mm -hmm. the flavor profile of really old scotch have been very different from what we get today? In theory, the Scots have tended to use whatever barrels they could buy that were reasonably affordable. Prudent. And so they would use used barrels and they would buy them mostly from the wine industry. Uh, early days, they even used barrels that carried other things like fish and stuff. And then they would re-char them out and discover like, oh, this is a bad idea. So that it's been dominantly wine industry for hundreds of years. Um, and then when shipping and the bourbon industry exploded with New Oak, all of a sudden there was this glut of used bourbon barrels in the market and the Scots went, hey, uh, we'll take that. So America changed the flavor profile of Scotch forever at that point. Koma Gataki, single cast 2015 episode. This is Josh Entes. Uh, love your show and I would love your thoughts on something. if. You wanted to flavor and age new make and you use chips or a piece of barrel stave. Do you get close to the flavor you want? Uh, then pull out most, and then pull most out and leave out. Find a comma, my man. <laughs> Periods and commas. 
pull out most and leave out a little bit onto age, or do you just need to use a little bear? This is literally a paragraph. Yeah, just the with... point is, can you get the same impact <laughs> with wood chips? I'm not done busting balls. I'm not done busting balls. What are you doing? I'm All right, bust middle. balls. I'm in Feel the free middle to bust of balls. busting. Josh. Josh. My nature isn't one of grammar Nazi. You're killing me, man. You're killing me. So the answer, the question is essentially, can wood chips replace a barrel? And the answer is no, absolutely not. And primarily it has to do with the amount of surface you get uh, on wood to spirit ratio, but it also seems to do with how the wood is cut and kilned and dried and things yeah, like that. And when you get wood chips. Huge, the, the char is a huge factor. In yeah, and, you, and the charring and all of that kind of stuff. It, no, you can't. You can get wood impact. Yeah. You can't duplicate a real barrel like that. You can definitely duplicate you definitely get flavor for wood sure. influence. It will definitely do something. But it won't be exactly the same as aging in the barrel. Daniel, is it too early to say that I miss you? Yeah, this is weird. I don't like this. You know what I have noticed, though? Yeah. We don't interrupt each other as much. Uh, well, you... Not as much. Uh, I think... Oh. Uh, uh, hmm. Hmm. We'll let Dan, the editor, Fancy Dan, weigh in on who interrupts who the most. Oh, I definitely interrupt the most. Okay, fair. That's not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> like, like for every nine of yours, maybe I'll get in there and... No, I never interrupt. I take it back. I'm the good one. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> if you fight me, you fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink... May you drink with us.